And, and you're going to find that everything you eat here is sweet. Everything. Because the Creator is sweet. He didn't make things bitter. You know, I, I, had, a, I, I had a question about bitter. Because when, when the film the film first came out, the Back to Eden film came out in August 19, 2011. And I had all these farmers coming all winter, you know, because it came out late. And they're coming here. And I'm feeding them kale in my garden. This is all I had in February. And everybody's saying, this is not bitter. This is sweet. Well, I hear something over and over, nonstop, like a hundred times. I'm thinking, like, I'm supposed to get something here. This is not coincidental. So, God, what's up with this bitter? I want you to look at my body language. When plants grow in compacted, dead soil, they struggle to, to put out roots and to live. And they're expressing in their flavor their bitterness. It's huge. They're expressing in their flavor they're, they're bitter because life was hard. Conversely, when plants grow in nutrient-dense, aerated soil, life was easy. It was sweet. And they taste like it. It's very, nature is very amazing how it really communicates truth. It's, it's really powerful. So this same principle, like, <laughs> this same principle will work, though, in flower gardens as well. For everything. Yeah. There's nothing it doesn't work in. <laughs> you, know the, you know the Creator made things really easy for us? If you look, if you look at the, you know, if someone were to ask you, where in the plant is the most fertile soil? Everybody goes to the forest. What's the forest composed of? Wood chips, needles, leaves, and twigs. And everything grows well there. I mean, it's just, it's so obvious. And what I love about it is no one shows up to work. Did you hear me? In nature, no one shows up to work. It's the most sustainable permaculture on the planet. Sustainable permaculture. It totally takes care of itself. It doesn't need any help. Look, look at these sequoia trees behind you. Look at how deep, dark green that foliage is. Totally Where are they getting all that nitrogen to make them that green? Look at the ground. <laughs> needles. Nothing but needles from the tree. I mean, the evidence is so obvious if you're looking. This isn't fertilized. It's not watered. This is just the natural response to a nice cover. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just, it's so simple. It's like, it's not like lawns. Like, yeah. So everybody wants you to take, like I'm a landscaper, so everybody wants you to take their clippings away. Well, their clippings, their clippings are full of nitrogen. Like if we just leave And let me lawn. tell you about lawns, because you're going to love this. In the 50s, when I was growing up, the Japanese gardens in L.A. maintained the nicest places. And when chemical fertilizers came on, everybody bought it except them. And you see them going down their truck, down the with their trucks full of manure sacks, sear manure, chick manure, with, with spreaders, and they top dress their lawns with, with manures, and their lawns always look the best. Here's what happened after the 50s. Thatch in lawns never existed prior to chemical fertilizers. No one ever thatched lawns in the 50s. When your, your parents didn't thatch their lawns. But when you use chemical fertilizers, all the living organisms leave, the worms, the bacteria, the fungi, can't live there because it's toxic so they all leave and now there's nothing there to break down the dead grass and so you have to thatch it out because it's not decomposing and all you have to do is reestablish the natural order and all of a sudden it comes back back into place i mean it's just so amazing how we don't get it because it's so obvious all these issues never happened before we started using these chemicals and why do we keep doing it it's like, it's like, it doesn't work. You know, the same with tilling. You would thought, you thought, you thought the dust would have got our attention. You can't expose ground. It's not safe. They keep doing it. I mean, it's just like, are we, and we're supposed to be intelligent beings. I mean, it's, it's, to me, it's crazy because it's just, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I want to wait till 2.30, give everybody the chance to get here on time. Sorry, she didn't end up being a good deer dog. It's okay. <laughs> she's so sweet. She's a sweet dog, but she she she's she's a she's a social dog. The deer are welcome. But I got to get a good dog, and because the deer are hard on my trees. <laughs> have you any animals or birds or anything bothering them? Uh, I have deer. You see all the damage to my trees. Okay. I never had it before because I had good dogs. Wow. But I don't have a good dog now. I had Labradors in the past, and they were just really great. Okay. And so I need to get another one because they were they were very very good. You know, 
because there's not much birds here, like at our house in North Carolina. We have birds everywhere coming down. We have birds. There's, there's birds around. Um, maybe today it's just too. They're out in the shade, but we 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 have a lot of birds. Keep them away from strawberries and those. No, things? you know, the, I have I have so much as enough for all of us. Oh, okay. They eat my eat my blueberries, but it's just there's plenty for all of us. Now the only one only bird I had a problem with was crows, because they're not nice. They won't eat an apple. They'll bite into one and go to the next and damage it. They're really not nice. So I'm asking the creator how to get rid of them, and says you need to take one out and hang it up. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. But taking one out is a, is a major challenge. They got a lookout over here, one over there, while all the rest are eating. As soon as I go to my shed to get my gun, he sa they're saying, he's getting his gun, leave. I'm serious. I'm watching this every day, man. Like I, could, I finally got a shot at one. I thought I missed it. But I get down to my pond, I saw it floating. I thought, awesome. So I put up a, a PVC pipe along my fence. I hung it up there. And I got out here the next morning at 5 o'clock when they came in because I wanted to see what happened. They come in, like they always do, but all of a sudden their whole, the whole sound changed. They started circling high. They weren't coming down. And I thought like, wow, man, this works. You see, they're intelligent. And when they see a dead crow, they know this is not a safe place. And the next year, there was a big raven out in my field. And I don't know what he was focused on, but he was really focused in my grass. So I, I went to my shed and I got my gun. I got him. I hung him up. The next year, the crows flew a lot higher. I'm serious. They stayed a lot higher because, man, if a crow, I mean, if a raven got taken out, this is really dangerous. Don't go there, you know. But, but it's been like, I think now, um, I think about three years since I put them up because I think they pass it on to their generations. Don't go there. It's not safe there. And it's just, I haven't had to use one for about three or four years because they just don't come. Yeah, well, they will. Oh yeah, incredible, and and just, I mean, they have these little lookouts all around there, and total communication, man, it's phenomenal. They're really intelligent birds, but they're hard on your trees. So, um, and you know, scare crows is a joke to them, they know what that is, you know? But a dead crow is reality, and they get it. Like, that's not a safe place, don't go there. So it really works well. And my sense is, it's really um, kind. One crow sacrifices his life to save all the rest, really. Yeah, so it's actually a kind thing. Instead of taking them all out, just just take one out, and that, that works for all the rest. You know, So it's really a um, conservative, kind thing to do. Let one be the sacrifice and do the job. Well, that's all I have for this video. Bang around that bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos come out. Call us on the hotline if you have comments or questions and want to be featured in an upcoming video. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. Check us out on the website. And we'll see you guys on the next one.